Today, I'm gonna try to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Platinum with only Rock-type Pokemon. I'm gonna be honest, rock types are very dangerous to work with as they've got a ton of common weaknesses and are incredibly slow overall. Not only that, but while we do have some super cool potential encounters, well, there aren't too many of them. So I predict this is going to be a tough one. Let's see if we can be Pokemon Platinum with only the first rock type that we find on each route, no items in battle, level caps in place, and the battle mode on set at all times. And if we're gonna be talking about rocks today, then I cannot fail to mention a new game I've been playing that absolutely rocks. Honkai Impact 3rd, the sponsor of today's video and a free-to-play 3D cross-platform anime action game from Hoyoverse, the makers of Genshin Impact and the upcoming Honkai Star Rail. This game is wild. Right off the bat, I was thrown into wicked combat on a fighter jet with incredibly smooth graphics and a killer soundtrack too, so you know I was hooked immediately. In it, you'll play as Valkyries to save the civilization from the will of Honkai, a god figure who wishes to inhibit its progress by creating the evil her humanoid beings that possess unthinkable strength. On April 6th, a new chapter in the story begins, and there are loads of new changes with the version 6.5 update, including the new character Susanna, who will become Valkyrie Quicksand, whose playstyle will merge dance steps and music together. There's also a new outfit for Hersher of Sentience called Turn Up the Music, which features a leather jacket, metal chains, and little phoenixes on her belt and cap, and Peachy Spring, Hersher of Human Ego's new outfit for Elise which looks really cool and changes the environment when she casts her ultimate. Along with new weapons, a Valkyrie Resort event full of kittens, a new Homu World Tour Champion event where champions can control chibi Valkyries in PvP action with four new maps and two new types of game modes. Couple that with a new emoji system and much, much more. Download Honkai Impact 3rd now and experience the version 6.5 update for yourself. Check the pinned comment and link in the description to become a legend. When you're in, use code NEWCHAPTER to get 30 crystals, 2,888 asteroids, and one character trial card for free. I'll see you in Honkai. All right, here we go. Pokemon Platinum, one of the best Pokemon games out there. Dare I say, this game rocks. After Barry breaks into our room, he threatens us with a $1 million fine, and Barry, please have mercy. Tax season just passed. Oh gosh, Barry, what happened here? It looks like your whole house is covered in j Ah, damn it! Watch where you're going, man! Now, upon reaching the starters, I realized something that has grave implications for us. Literally, all three of them have dangerous typings for the rock type. I mean, within these balls, there are future fighting, steel, and ground types, not to mention the initial grass and water to begin with. For the greatest challenge, I think I'm gonna choose Chimchar, as it's a pure fire type to start, and that would be easy for us to handle. Wait, you're Rosie Anna, and you're Don's father? Huh. You know, I I'm sensing a lot of tension here. You guys having an affair? So what the hell's the matter with you? Oh wow, I didn't know the professor had TMs. Was he a trainer when he was young? You know, they constantly tease things like Rowan having been a former champion, but then never end up confirming or denying this like 15 years later. After getting some Pokeballs from Dawn, the run has officially begun as we can seek out our first legitimate encounter. Making it to Jubilife, this girl gives us the Quick Claw. Huh, she knows exactly what kind of run we're doing, doesn't she? Just sitting there gloating with her speedy electric types like, you need this more than I do. After scouring the city for clowns, you know, they actually got this quite right. This is what traversing through any major city is like. We can hit up our first encounter location, the Orberg Gate. In here, we can find a Geodude, which I catch and nickname Benatar. Benatar ends up having a careful nature, plus special defense and minus special attack, which is actually pretty much perfect. And thankfully, not the sturdy ability either. You might think to yourself, wait, sturdy would be great for a Pokemon with so many weaknesses, but nope. Don't forget, in Gen 4, sturdy only works against actual one hit KO moves like Fisher and Sheer Cold, so Rockhead is definitely better here. Hitting up Route 201 again, I decide to EV train Benatar primarily in speed, HP, and special attack to make up for its weaknesses. I've done this strategy before to great effect in other runs, so let's see if we can make the magic happen again. Along the way at level 9, Benatar learns Rock Polish to raise her speed, and we next arrive in Orberg City where the first gym is. In the mines, we find a colored shard, and weirdly enough, these are going to be absolutely crucial later on. Speaking of crucial, hitting up the Orberg mines leads us to a new encounter. This time, an Onyx, which I catch 
catch and nicknamed Bonham. Bonham ends up having a plus special defense and minus defense nature. Not terrible, but it does have sturdy. Great. Can't wait to avoid a sheer cold. With some training under our belt, it's time for the first gym, the Orberg City one led by our rock-type arch nemesis, Rourke. His team actually looks quite tough for us to beat as there's not much rock can do against rock, but I suppose the same goes both ways, so let's try this out. He leads with a Geodude, and I send out Bonham to begin with. Knowing we can't do anything to him, I decide to go for Screeches to lower his defense. Onyx has a terrible attack stat, but good defense, although Geodude is good in both those areas. After lowering his defense fully and him getting up a Stealth Rocks, I decide to go for Harden to raise our defense even further. After three of them, I start using Rage, a move I never thought I'd use in my life. Now, Rage is a weird one, as I had thought it only increased the power of each consecutive Rage attack attack, but apparently in this gen it actually raises your attack stat for all attacks without saying that it does so. With so many attack raises, we're eventually able to take him down even after he potions, with us being left at 19 HP after a 3 minute war. In comes his own Onyx next, and with our defense increases, he can only do 1 HP damage at a time, although he did get a crit at one point. With our attack now maxed out, I eventually switched to Rock Throw once I figured out what Rage actually does, and after lowering his defense with Screech a couple more times, and on just 8 HP remaining, I hit him with a rock throw, and whoa, it basically one hit KO the damn thing. Was not expecting that. In comes his final Pokemon, Kranidos, and I'm getting quite worried at this low HP, but I go for rock throw, knowing we'll outspeed at least, and bam, a one hit KO on it. You know what? Rage isn't actually half bad. One badge down. Leaving Jubilife, we run into the gang featuring a few galactic grunts who proceed to say that it will be a painful time for Rowan's assistant if he doesn't cooperate. I... what? Why don't you just hurt him if you need to? What does Don have to do with anything? Well, at least we do learn magnitude for fighting them, and we do make it a painful time for her after all, killing her turtwig along the way. Sorry, Don. The ravaged path up ahead nets us the Rock Tomb TM now that we can use Rock Smash to get there, and in no time we arrive in Floroma Town. And for some reason, Benatar and Bonham are feeling a little bit nervous here. No idea why. We do get some Oran Berries though. Oh boy, here comes the Master Upseller again. He proceeds to give us some honey for free to get us hooked, then even after saving his life, begins to urge us to buy some more. Anyone need some marketing classes? This guy's got you covered. Alright, it's time to break into the Valley Windworks. <laughs> Now the Commander Mars battle in here is usually incredibly tough, but you know what? This time I think we have the perfect counters. She leaves with a Zubat and I get Bonham out there. We missed our first attack immediately and then got toxic. Oof. We then hit her next one, but it barely doesn't KO, and then she hits a bite before we can take her down with another. In comes the thing that is usually monstrous to deal with, Perugly. With Toxic increasing in damage, I play it safe and get Benatar out there as I knew she would fake out. Faint Attack then hits us for a fifth or so before Rock Throw actually does surprisingly little. We hit back and forth a couple times before her Citrus Berry activates and I was like, uh, we're kinda losing this. So I switched to Magnitude hoping for something good, but we only get a 6. Uh oh. She hits us again to just 10 HP, but then we got a Magnitude 8 to end the battle. Alright, no more going in overconfident. Mars then says to... Wait, what's this guy's name? C-H-A-R-O-N? Is that like Karen? There's already a Karen in the Pokemon franchise, so it must be Charon? Oh wait, there's one of those too! Will you shut it? You only joined us recently. Don't think you're important. You know what? She's not wrong, my dude. You were introduced as a brand new galactic head character and hardly had a role. Now, I was incredibly careful moving through the next route as trainers with Amir Roselia would literally end our run with ease as our whole team is four times weak to grass. Thankfully, we make it safe to a forest with Cheryl, but there were definitely some challenges in here too. Like a Beautifly with Absorb, but thankfully it's only 20 base power with no safety same type attack bonus or stab, and we have four times damage rock moves against it. Oh, yeah, self-destruct. Great, Benatar. Really helpful for a Nuzlocke. We safely make it to Eterna City where the next gym is, but before anything we get to do something really cool. Hit up this house to get the Explorer Kit from the Old Man, which is going to be a pivotal key item for us for more than one reason. Barry then tells us about his genius idea of making sure all your attacks hit and avoiding enemy attacks to win battles. Wow. <laughs> 
Then we can head to a location that most would think is inaccessible at this point, Mount Coronet, where we actually have a new encounter. It's a 5% chance to find only in Platinum, and I actually found it on my second one, a nose pass. What a beauty. Naturally, I name her Blondie, and she has a plus special attack and minus speed nature, which is quite good as she won't be outspeeding much anyway, along with Magnet Pull too. Cool. Never thought I'd be using one of these if I'm honest. And since Mount Coronet counts as a magnetic fuel location, we can immediately evolve her into a beastly Probopass, as it has basically the same level up moveset anyway. Now because of Probopass's stat distribution, I'm going to completely max out her HP stat as it's the only weak defensive stat that she has, and I have a feeling we're going to need a defensive and special attacking presence like this very badly. Training exclusively against level 2 Bidoofs with 5,838 XP to work with at 16 XP each until level 21 means we have more than enough room to max it out. Let's go! Next up, using the Explorer Kit to hit up the Underground, a place I have not been in a very long while. It takes a damn long time, but eventually we find what we're looking for, the Skull Fossil. Fortunately, obtainable for us since we have an odd trainer ID number. Otherwise, we'd get the Armor one in Platinum. Heading back to the Orberg City Museum, we can have the guy who screams at you for taking too long, even if you literally leave and come back immediately. Revive it. Just chill, dude! From the revival, we get a Kranidos, which I named Bon Jovi, and who has a gentle, plus special defense, and minus defense nature. I'll take it. I mean, it's our first Pokemon without a 4 times weakness, after all. It's time for the Eterna Gym, and the trainers are terrifying for our team with grass types, and we have to face every single one of them. But we have one answer as Blondie isn't weak to grass fortunately and has great bulk. I did have to pick up the XP share to help though as taking on a load this big was getting Blondie over leveled fast. And surprisingly Bon Jovi came in clutch too with massive power takedown. Well, it's time. The second gym leader, Gardenia. I cannot tell you how long I theorycrafted for this battle, and nothing was seeming like it could work. But after hours of planning and calculations, we have to go for a risky plan. She leads with a Turtwig, and I send out Bonham. Problem being, this thing has Reflect, so I get up the Sandstorm right away with the smooth rock I got from the underground to extend its duration. And I was really hoping she'd Reflect, but nope, even through the Sandstorm, Storm special defense boost, Grass Knot devastates Bonham in one hit. <sighs> Here I send in Bon Jovi though, who I trained in attack and friendship like crazy so I hit a 102 power return and it's enough to one hit KO. Whew, that range was incredibly close. In comes Cherum next and I hit it as well for about two thirds and then she uses Leech Seed. Hmm. Not bad, as it was a low chance, but still a range to KO us with Magical Leaf. From there, another attack can take her down. But then, in comes the biggest threat of all, Roserade. This is what the Smooth Rock was needed for, extending the duration of Sandstorm, as I think we should be able to stay in here, and we do survive its attack on just 16 HP. Then, hit it hard with a return, but its berry combined with the Leech Seed recovery bring it back up above half. Here, I switch into our secret weapon though, Blood. Bondi. Even with a 150 special defense stat and the Sandstorm, Grass Knot still does nearly a quarter on us. And it was here that I realized our attack might bring her into potion range. So I take a big risk and just go for tackle. And after that, combined with the Sandstorm, I'm hoping she's not in potion range or we are done for. And she doesn't heal, so after another Grass Knot and our berry recovery, we can land a final rock throw to take that thing down. Holy, I'm not gonna lie, that was one of the most stressful battles of all time, as a lot had to go right there, but we made it through, partially thanks to her Cherum using Leech Seed and not having to depend on Blondie quite as much as we would have had it attacked Kranidos. Second badge down. At the top of the Galactic Tower, we have another commander battle, this time against Jupiter, and I was hoping we'd have a bit of an easier time than Mars, but, uh... It turns out her Zubat had Giga Drain of all things, which I had no idea about, but Benatar survived on just 15 HP before our berry and could then one Hikeo it with Rock Throw at least. Man oh man. Then in comes Skun Tank. Now overall I wasn't too worried about this thing but you can never be sure with high critical hit ratio Night Slash. I switch into Blondie who at least resists it though, the problem being that she has smoke screen to lower our accuracy and our damage output is abysmal. It was a long back and forth especially with our Citrus Berry helping out and our lowered accuracy and in the end we were both brought to the red. 
A crit would definitely knock us out though, so I switch into our last chance, Bon Jovi. She hits us hard on the switch, but our berry takes us back above half. It all depends if she crits on the next attack, and she doesn't, so we survive on just 8 HP and can take her out with a final return. Goodness gracious, we were one crit away from losing the run. We gotta be way more careful. Oh, damn it. An upgrade? What, is this just to taunt me? I was searching for this item like all of our last challenge we did. Cynthia then appears and forces her egg upon us. Okay, that was worded really weirdly. On Route 206, we can hit up the Wayward Cave secret entrance, and thankfully this area is accessible to us without strength, only in Platinum. Meaning at the end, we can grab an Unreal TM. Earthquake. Wicked. Right after our repel wears out in Mount Cornet, we encounter this weird blue-haired creature. Seems Seems very angry. Should I capture it? <laughs> Talking to the guy I should be most scared of, a fighting type trainer, he gives us the odd keystone. Huh, is that a rock type? This guy in the gate says that Hardhome City is the most desirable city to live in in the region. Let's see about that by entering- Oh god, a bunny with rabies! Run! Heading all the way back to Route 206, I make sure to pick up the Rost Berries I forgot to get, as I have a feeling we're gonna need them. It's time for the Hardhome Gym, and I realize we have quite a great answer for the trainers, Blondie, as she resists both ghost and psychic attacks. However, this damn mischievous I ended up facing ended up having pain split of all things, and we ended up getting confused. So it was a five minute long slugfest to defeat this one Pokemon and we almost lost the damn run with just 8 HP remaining. We just can't catch a break, can we? Along the way through, we have a great evolution as Benatar evolves into a Graveler. And Bon Jovi learned the Dark type Assurance move and Blondie learned Thunder Wave during training too. I also went back to the old chateau to pick up the Dread Plate to power up Dark type moves just in case we might need it. Now while theory crafting for the third gym leader, Fantina, I realized that because her Miss Maggie is has magical leaf and her whole thing is status with ways to burn, confuse, and put us to sleep, we only have one option, and it is a very risky one. I decide to teach the Taunt TM to Blondie from Route 211 and go for it. Fantina leads with a Dusk Gall and I get Blondie out there. Because she has Will-O-Wisp, I go for Thunder Wave to paralyze her after a Shadow Sneak, then use Taunt now that we outspeed, and she can't use it now. Yes! Now I can safely switch into Benatar, not fearing the burn, but she does use Future Sight and then Shadow Sneak through Paralysis. But here, I use Rock Polish to raise our speed, but we do have to get two off to outspeed her other Pokemon. Her taunt then wears off, and we take the Future Sight attack, but now I can start Rollout. She then hits a Will-O-Wisp, but a Rostberry heals us, and we cannot get hit by another one of those, and our next Rollout just barely doesn't KO, but she misses her next one. Yes! So after she potioned, our third one takes her down. Oh man, all we need to do is hit two more attacks as we outspeed and take down her Miss Magius with number four, and thankfully we land our final one against her Haunter to win us the badge. I sincerely think that was the only way to win that battle, and the setup with Blondie was crucial. The threats aren't over yet though, as we have a battle with Barry in the gate up ahead. He leads with a Staravia with Intimidate, not great for our physical team, so I lead with Benatar. Because he has Endeavor, which could demolish us if we bring him too low, I go for Rock Throw immediately, but we miss after his double team. He then double teams again, but we land one, but it doesn't quite KO thanks to Intimidate. He then indeed hits an Endeavor, which slams us to just 16 HP before our berry, then we land another to take him down. But in comes a grass type, Rosalia. Thankfully at this point we do have an answer though, as I can get Blondie out there who can take him down in a few rock throws. Although unfortunately we got leech seated. Not good, as in comes Primplop next. I know my only option is to Thunder Wave and hope for the best, as Bubble Beam suddenly slams us with a crit down to just 8 HP. Why? And I forgot about leech seed too, but our berry just saved us as we ended up with 7 HP. Goodness gracious! I have to risk it here as I switch in Bon Jovi, but he makes it through paralysis, but we survive on literally 1 HP before our berry, then get a crit of our own with return to KO. Oh man, we would have outsped on the next turn due to paralysis anyway as planned, but that survival was clutch. His final Pokemon is thankfully not as big of a threat, but I have nothing to switch in, so I just have to hope that we survive its attack, and we survive a resisted ember on just 4 HP and can take it down with return to end this damn battle. And what a battle it was. This is a tough run. Hitting up the Salacion Ruins. Hey, I wonder what the wall says here. 
Picking up the fistplate ahead and getting some training in, we have a wicked evolution as Bon Jovi the Kranidos evolves into a monster Rampardos. Although it may be slow, it has the single highest attack stat in this game, so it should be wild. Funnily enough, I panicked like an idiot about the double battle up ahead, but forgot that the Gyarados they have is only in Diamond and Pearl, not Platinum, so overall it was a lot more manageable than I thought. Especially with Bon Jovi going nuts with his base 165 attack stat, and Assurance actually came in handy against a rampaging Driftblim near the end. With that, we've arrived in our next gym location, Veilstone City, and have quite a haul coming up. Not only can we hit up the game corner to get both the Silk Scarf and the Swords Dance TM, but Route 214 to the South is accessible where we can grab some citrus berries, finally, and also a new encounter. As the grass here nets us, a Rhyhorn, which I catch and nickname Bowie. Bowie ends up having a hasty plus speed and minus defense nature, not bad at all. Not only that, but we can also grab the dig TM from the cave nearby, which should come in handy. It's time for the Veilstone Gym, a fighting type gym, which of course poses a huge threat to our team, and not even Blondie can save us this time around. With that said, Bon Jovi is growing ever so stronger and could rip through most of the trainers with Silk Scarf boosted return, even taking down high defense Pokemon like Machoke. The fourth gym leader though, Maylene, is a different story, as her team is quite a threatening one for us. We do have one secret weapon though, teaching Earthquake to Bon Jovi. With my best plan in place, let's go for it. She leads with a Metatite and I get Bon Jovi out there. We have a good start as we can immediately outspeed and devastate that thing with return. Then in comes Machoke. The calcs here are incredibly close and it's a range to KO with return even with insane attack investment and we don't get the KO in the red but then she goes for Rock Tomb. It does drop our speed but much better than a fighting move. It all depends if we can outspeed here as we cannot switch and we do. Yes, this might be possible after all. In comes her ace, a huge threat Lucario, both of whose types are brutal for us. It outspeeds and smashes us with Force Palm and we survive on just 8 HP and can land massive power super effective earthquake for the KO. Holy. Even if her Machoke had used a fighting move against us, we could have switched into Graveler to tank two force palms with the citrus berries, so we did have a backup, but I'm just glad we didn't have to risk it. Looking ahead, I make sure to do the game corner grind for the Thunderbolt TM, as I have a feeling we're gonna need it. The salty tang of the sea tastes like my tears after a hard day at work. You're literally hanging out at a resort. Is this what you consider hard work? Next up, Pastoria. City. There is the move relearner here, but first I had gone ahead to pick up a few items at the Pokemon Mansion, and you know, in Platinum the other doorway becomes a whole battling thing, but what the hell is behind this door? It's been 16 years and we still don't have a clue. Interestingly, the grass here would have our next encounter, but you can only find it here post national decks, unfortunately. And of course, because we're making forward momentum of any kind, Barry has to come in and stop it. This time, I have a bit of a different strat. He leads with Staravia, and this time I lead with Blondie to take the Intimidate. Then I switch into Benatar as he double teams. Now I can switch into Blondie as he double teams again, and then land a super effective Thunderbolt I taught her for the instant KO. Much better than last time. As planned, I was able to bait in his Primplup here, and this time we have a perfect answer with Thunderbolt for massive damage, as two Bubble Beams take us to a quarter since we unfortunately just activated his Torrent ability. But another takes him down as our Citrus Berry brings us above half. In comes Rosalia next, and since we got rid of the Intimidate, we can use our newly learned Rock Slide for massive damage, taking him down in two at below half health. His final Pokemon is Ponyta, and I switch in Benatar for the easy newly learned Earthquake Annihilation. Much better. As it turns out, Blondie is amazing even in the Pastoria Gym against the trainers, not being weak to water and now having the great T-Bolt coverage too. But the fifth gym leader Wake is a different story with a very frightening team. Why is like every gym leader super effective against us? Regardless, I lead with Blondie against his Intimidate Gyarados of all things. We get hit hard by Waterfall off the bat, but then can respond with a 4 times damage Thunderbolt 1 hit KO. Nice. Fortunately enough, Blondie had learned Sandstorm right at the level 37 cap, so when his Quagsire comes in, I can use it, thereby increasing our team's special defense and would have allowed us to tank the 4 times damage 
one shot much better, but he missed anyway. I switch in Bon Jovi who tanks it well now and can smash him in a single crit return. Not bad at all. In comes his ace though, Floatzel. He hits an Aqua Jet to a quarter before return, just barely doesn't KO on a sliver, and his Citrus Berry just saves him from the Sandstorm recoil too. Oh no. I have to switch here, so I go into Blondie as he Hyper Potions. Sandstorm has just run out too, so this is dangerous. Brian hits us below half, but our berry just saves us from the extra damage on the next one as it brings us above half. And Thunderbolt also barely KOs, so he hits another, and we survive on 31 HP and can land a final attack to win the battle. I kid you not, if our berry hadn't brought us above the halfway mark to weaken the power of Brian, that was the end of the entire run. Wild. Oh, you know what? You're a disappointment to your father's bloodline. He's out there running the damn battle frontier, and look at you, Barry. What are you doing? Huh. Well, this is awkward. Okay, no word of a lie, I was struggling hard with a Luxio who had maxed out its evasiveness and was in the fog of Route 210, so I took a long shot with Horn Drill and hit it. Someone please calculate the odds of that, it has to be like zero. Arriving in Celestic Town, we could admire the beauty of the ancient city and pick up the choice specs later in the day too. In the ruins, Cyrus challenges us to battle and we have to impress Cynthia's grandma here, I mean come on. Fortunately enough, with him having nothing but ice and flying Pokemon, Blondie is a perfect counter, being able to sweep through his entire team with a combination of Rock Slide and Thunderbolt. Never thought a Probo Pass would be this useful to be honest. After the battle we get the Surf HM, and wait, this HM belonged to Cynthia? I could make a terrible joke here, but I'm going to not release the floodgates. <laughs> Alright, it's been a while since our last encounter, but fortunately the Surf HM unlocks a new one on a route that many of you probably didn't even know exists, as we can go south from Sand Gem Town to cross the water routes of 219 and 220 to eventually arrive in Route 221, where there's a weird man who gives you actually incredible items if you show him a Pokemon at the level that he says, but he says 98 today. Are you kidding me? Regardless, we do get our next encounter here at least, a Sudowoodo who I catch and nickname Ruth. Ruth ends up having an impish plus defense and minus special attack nature, which is great, and the Rockhead ability too. Man, for once we've actually had great nature and ability pulls. Not only that, but we can also use the Move Tutor to teach her both the Wood Hammer and Low Kick moves for much needed coverage, along with also teaching Fire Punch to Benatar. Now we're talking. Arriving in Cantalave City has me very much fretting what's to come, and with five badges in hand, my self-imposed rules now allow me to finally trade evolve Benatar into a beastly golem who I think we're very much going to need the help of, as we have a scary berry battle on the bridge with his now ridiculously powered up team. He leads with a now fully evolved Staraptor, and I get Blondie out there to take the Intimidate. Thankfully, he no longer has Endeavor, so I can paralyze him immediately. Then, set up Sandstorm with the Smooth Rock. With him unable to hurt us much, I get Benatar out there, and can more or less freely set up a Rock Polish to raise our speed. Then, take him down with a massive power Rock Throw. In comes his fully evolved Empoleon next, but because because we now outspeed and it has the steel type, one stab super effective earthquake demolishes it. Yes. And even though his now fully evolved Roserade and Heracross are massive threats for us, our newly learned Fire Punch demolishes the first one in one hit and we got a crit against Heracross to do the same, with us definitely being able to survive a Brick Break even if he had hit one. His final Pokemon is now a fully evolved Rapidash and there's nothing more glorious than watching a Golem outspeed a Flaming Horse. Devastating stating it with Earthquake. Amazing. On Iron Island, we also find an exciting item, the Protector, which we'll make great use of in a bit. The Cantalave Gym is up next, a Steel-type one, yet again a super effective type against us, but thankfully we do have Ground-type move coverage on most of our Pokemon, so that was very helpful against them. And even one of the trainers with the Scizor, otherwise a big threat, got manhandled by a 4 times damage Fire Punch. Our coverage is definitely getting better. The sixth gym leader is Byron, Rourke's father, and I'm not gonna lie, we finally got some leeway as Benatar devastated all three of his Pokemon in four earthquakes, taking zero damage along the way. Damn, does that ever feel good after all that we've been through. Not only that, but he also gives us a key TM, Flash Cannon, great for Blondie who is a part steel type special attacker. In the Cantalave library, we... Hey, could you keep it down? This is a library! Oh, hey there, little buddies. Isn't it nice being in nature, breathing in that fresh, wild air? 
Facing Commander Saturn in the Lake Cave, I could lead with Benatar against his Golbat, get a Rock Polish off, then he hit a Super Sonic. But I had attached a Person Berry to heal us, so from there we had super effective moves against it, his Bronzor with Fire Punch, which would have otherwise walled us hard, and even outspeed his Toxicroak, which would have proved a threat with its fighting type. At Lake Verity, we got challenged by Commander Mars, and I led with Ruth against her Golbat, and it missed its Toxic, but then we missed our Rock Slide. Well, that's awkward. She then preemptively switched into her Bronzor, and stubborn as I am, I spent a full two minutes sucker punching and low kicking that thing to death. Golbat was then demolished by a single Rock Slide, and unfortunately, Ruth couldn't handle the whole team in her debut battle, but Perugly was walled hard by Bon Jovi, who got the job done right at half after two returns. In Mount Cornet, we could grab two crucial pickups, the TM-69, nice, Rock Polish, and also the Soft Sand to boost ground moves. Along the way to our next destination, we had a wicked evolution as Bowie evolved into a Rhydon, upping his bulk and power substantially before we then arrive in the beautiful city of Snow Point. Trade evolving Bowie with the Protector item from Iron Island evolved him into a monster Rhyperior. Undeniably one of the scariest Pokemon that I would not want to encounter in real life. Unless it was on my side, of course. The Snow Point Gym is upon us, and Bowie is able to tear through most of the trainers with Rock Blast, being incredibly bulky and powerful at the same time. The seventh gym leader is Candice, the Ice type specialist, a type that we do have super effectiveness against, but she also has super effectiveness against most of our Pokemon too, so this could be a dangerous one. After coming up with our best plan, let's go for it. She leads with a Sneasel, so I send out Bowie. With the solid rock ability, super effective moves aren't quite as powerful against us, so we tank Ice Punch well and get up Stealth Rock, which I taught him. I can then switch in Blondie to get the second part of my setup active, Sandstorm. Then, I switch into Benatar, knowing we'd bait a non-ice move on a steel type, which works well. I can then tank Ice Shard well and get the Rock Polish activated, then being able to crush Sneasel with the Fire Punch after she priority Ice Sharded us to below half. In comes a gigantic threat, a Bomb Snow. Quite unfortunate as it ends the Sandstorm. But after the Stealth Rock damage and Rock Polish, we can then 4 times damage Fire Punch it into Oblivion. Could have demolished nearly our entire team otherwise, that was the only real safe way to deal with it. In comes another big threat, Piloswine, and we don't have quite the damage range to take it down, so I'm forced to switch into Bowie, who tanks a stab super effective Earthquake surprisingly well, especially after our berry. Another one then hits us to just 46 HP, and thankfully the plan works as the one hammer arm does the job, and we even survive the hail too. In comes yet another big threat, Frostlass with Snowcloak in the hail. So I switch into perhaps our one answer, Blondie, who can tank even Blizzards quite handily, and respawn with the new stab super effective Flash Cannon for the KO and the win. A tough one, but I think we strategized well there to pull it off. Picking up a painful reminder of our lost Duskull in our previous run, we then make it to the Galactic HQ where Cyrus challenges us to battle. Giving Ruth another chance to show her stuff, I lead with her against his Sneasel, and after getting our defense dropped by a Screech, a single Rock Slide devastates it. In comes Crobat next, and Bite does more than it should before Rock Slide barely doesn't take it down in the red. So after he potioned and we hit him again, he landed another before we could KO him. With Ruth right at half now as Honchkrow comes out and that defense drop too, we're not safe to stay in, so I can switch in Bowie to completely tank whatever he's got and land the Rock Blast for the 4 hit KO even through his berry. Not bad. After the battle, Cyrus gives us a Master Ball crazily enough, saying that he doesn't need it as he doesn't want to make Pokemon his friends. Oh boy, are you ever going to regret that, my dude. With Rock Climb in hand, we can now access a part of Mount Coronet that nets us one of the best TMs in the game for our team, Rock Slide. It took a while to get this, didn't it? At the summit, we arrive at Spear Pillar, where we have a crazy double battle with the commanders to engage in. Problem is, their Bronzors have Reflect and Light Screen, and they have a Gold Bat with Giga Drain of all things. So I came up with what I think might be a viable plan. I lead with Benatar as Barry brings out his Munchlax. Seriously, you couldn't have brought a Snorlax, my dude? And the Bronzors get their screens up. But I taught Benatar the Brick Break TM from the Orberg Gate so it can shatter their screens. Then I focus fire on the left Bronzor with Fire Punch to take it out, bringing in the Skun Tank. Now I can Earthquake it twice for the KO, killing the Munchlax too so I can get Barry's Star After out. Now predicting the Giga Drain as their goal back comes out, I switch into Blondie and the plan works perfectly, allowing me to Thunderbolt that thing into oblivion and also tank through their other Golbat and Perugly with Barry's help to win the battle. That worked out pretty well. 
What didn't work out well is Cyrus's plans, though. I mean, he literally had six legendary Pokemon summoned to the top of a mountain at the same time. But what did he think was gonna happen? Peace and tranquility and Team Galactic victory? A long trip through the Distortion World and we arrive at the final Galactic battle, the leader, Cyrus. With as much preparation as I can muster and bringing Benatar right near the level cap to help us, let's get the job done. He leads with a Houndoom, and I get Blondie out there first, who gets hit with a Flamethrower, but tanks it quite well before paralyzing him with Thunder Wave. Then, I can get the Sandstorm up on the next turn for residual damage and the special defense boost. Now, I can safely get Bowie out there, as Houndoom fortunately remains paralyzed. I then get the Stealth Rocks up too, fantastic against his team as they are literally all weak to it. Now, as the final part of my plan, I switch in Benatar, and he made it through Paralysis, but missed his Will-O-Wisp. Now, I Rock Polish twice in a row as he has some fast Pokemon and he never ended up getting the burn off even though we had a Rostberry prepared anyway, an earthquake destroys him. Unfortunately, he sends out Gyarados next, which has Intimidate, of course, but I had moved tutored Benatar with Thunder Punch, and only after the help of Stealth Rock do we have the range to one-hit KO him with that four times damage. That was huge. In comes Weavile next, and with our speed at plus four, we outspeed even it with a Golem for the four times damage Brick Break KO through Intimidate. Incredibly, both his Honchkrow and Crobat couldn't even bring Benatar below half from there, as we did struggle to KO them after Intimidate, but still managed it with over half remaining to send Cyrus to the Shadow Realm. But we nearly get sent to the Shadow Realm first as Giratina attacks us for some reason, not the dude that triggered him, but Blondie comes in clutch with her typing yet again resisting everything it has and taking him down on just below half. What a legend in her own right. If you see Cynthia, please give her my best regards. <laughs> you old player, you. Arriving in the final gym destination, Sunny Shore, we run into Flint, who is being very friendly with us. Uh, my dude, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think you're gonna like me very much. The final gym is Sunny Shore, and, well, just look at our team. I'm sure you can imagine how an electric gym went. Against the 8th gym leader, Volkner, I basically tested out Bowie's full potential, and he swept through his entire team with Earthquake, being left on 70 HP after our berry helped. Hey, no, bad Sinatra. No evolving for you. Barry then interrupts our date with Jasmine and talks about how he doesn't want to be just like his father. He wants to be the toughest trainer ever. So, uh... You want to be like your father then. The final path is upon us, Victory Road, and during the trek through we find one heck of a TM for our team, Stone Edge. Great power, but a little bit risky on the accuracy and hardcore Nuzlocks. A long journey brings us to our final destination, the Pokemon League. Right before entering, Barry challenges us to a final battle, and luckily for this battle you can purposefully level up closer to the League level cap to help out. His team at this point is ridiculously strong and versatile, but we can use a similar strategy to last time. However, unfortunately his Staraptor has 4 times damage close combat, we just have to hope for no crit, and he doesn't get one so we can land the Thunder Wave. Sheesh, there was no choice there really, we had to risk the crit. Here I switch into Benatar, then set up the Rock Polish, and then nail him with 2 Brick Breaks for the KO, taking 1 close combat in the process. Now we can start sweeping, with his Empoleon going down to an Earthquake, Roserade to Fire Punch, but then in comes Heracross, and my calcs told me we would get the KO, but we don't, but we get the burn in an absolute clutch turnaround so his attack is lowered and he can't KO us so another takes him down. Oh man, that was miraculous. In comes Snorlax though, so I switch into Bowie to tank Earthquake and then proceed to have an Earthquake versus Earthquake battle with Bowie emerging victorious in the end with the help of Solid Rock. Finally, his Rapidash managed a sunny day before getting clobbered by Bowie's immense power. Whew. After some hardcore theory crafting, fulfilling the rest of our AVs, and getting any remaining items and TMs we might need, it's time to challenge the Sinnoh Elite Four. The first Elite Four member is Aaron, the Bug-type trainer, and, well, I mean, look at our team. But the answer isn't as immediately obvious as one might think. However, I taught good old Bon Jovi Rock Polish and Swords Dance in addition to Earthquake and Fire Punch, so he could set up both against his Yanmega, getting hit surprisingly hard by Bug Buzz in the process before our berry, but his Yanmega then used U-Turn to go into Scizor, who did not appreciate that at all. Heracross and Vespaquin then went down to Fire Punches, then, precisely because his Yanmega switched out and lost its speed boost, we could outspeed it with Fire Punch as well. Otherwise, that would have been threatening. And finally, we have a perfect answer for Drapion, Earthquake to win the battle. Bon Jovi is a monster. 
However, the second Elite Four member is Bertha, the ground-type trainer, and her team? Oh man, her team. It took me millennia of theory crafting to even get an idea of what to do against her, as even her lead, Whiskash, counters ours in every way, but I lead with Ruth against it. Thankfully, she didn't attack, but rather use Sandstorm the first turn, so a 4 times damage Woodhammer eviscerates her with no recoil thanks to Rockhead. Very glad I kept that, as Whiskash is a brutal threat otherwise. In comes another one, though, Hippowdon. She uses Yawn before Woodhammer hits her low. Falling asleep would be terrible right now, though, so I switch into Bowie, but she yawns again. I kept switching until she stopped yawning, fortunately landing on Solid Rock Bowie, getting hit by Earthquake. But another Earthquake from us finally takes that thing down. Then, in comes another huge threat, Gliscor, and I know I need to stay in here, so we tank Earthquake on just 41 HP in the red before our berry. Then, Stone Edge does big damage, but not enough. And we fall asleep from yawn. Uh-oh. I have to switch, so I go into Ruth, and we take just the right amount of damage after our berry to be able to survive another, it looks like, thanks to our plus defense nature, so I stay in, and we survive on just 19 HP in the red before crushing her with a 4 times damage Ice Punch. Sheesh. But then, in comes Golem, and we will not outspeed it. So I have to switch into Benatar, the only thing that can tank an Earthquake here, and our berry brings us back above half. I can then land an Earthquake of our own right into the red, then she hits us again, and we survive on just 25 HP and can land a final two when she heals to take her down. Then, in comes her final Pokemon, Rhyperior. And at this moment, I realized we have no choice at all. I stay in, hit an Earthquake to only two-thirds after her berry, and Benatar, our starter, goes down. From here though, I can thankfully switch in Bon Jovi for the outspeed and revenge kill with an Earthquake which does just barely enough according to my calcs. Let's go. A painful Pokemon loss, but we made it through at least, and that was no guarantee. The third Elite Four member is Flint, the Fire Trainer, and yep, we can lead with Bon Jovi, set up the Rock Polish, although his Houndoom did get Sunny Day up, which is incredibly dangerous with his Solar Beam Pokemon like Rapidash, but fortunately we outspeed and knock out every single one with a super-powered Earthquake. And I got Bowie out there to tank his Flareon because, well, Bowie hates Flareons. Okay, no, I actually just wanted to split the XP as Bon Jovi's nearing the cap. The last Elite Four member is Lucian, the Psychic-type trainer who actually has a complex team for us to deal with, with a Fighting-type Glade and a Levitate Bronzong to name a couple. But after coming up with what I thought was a decent plan, let's give it a shot as he leads with Mr. Mime and I get Blondie out there. He goes for Reflect right away, not good for us at all, but I paralyze him with Thunder Wave. I then go for Power Gem to get some damage up, but not much at all before he light screens. But all I'm doing here is actually just stalling out the Reflect, as it can't do much offensively to us. After getting Sandstorm up to boost our special defense, I then switch into Bon Jovi. He hits a Thunderbolt, and thankfully no paralysis as that might have ended us. And I can now set up with Rock Polish, although Reflect ended one turn earlier than I thought, but he stays paralyzed. Whew. Now I can Swords Dance to raise our attack, then tank a Psychic around half, although our special defense did drop, before taking him down with Earthquake. In comes the big threat though, Bronzong, which would annihilate us with Gyro Ball at this moment, so I have to hope that my calcs pull us through on the Fire Punch, and they do. Yes! Now we can sweep through his Gallade, Alakazam, and Espeon with Earthquake for the victory. Blondie, you are a setup legend. It's time. The final challenge, the champion of the Sinnoh region, Cynthia, the bane of many Pokemon players' existence worldwide. And for a couple different reasons. Using the rest of our rare candies picked up along our journey, it's time for the final battle. Cynthia leads with her Spiritomb, and I send out Blondie. Funnily enough, her Spiritomb is the perfect thing to set up our Thunder Wave and Sandstorm against, as Blondie resists all of his moves. Then, I switch into Bon Jovi, who tanks Shadow Ball reasonably well. Then, I set up our Rock Polish and Swords Dances, two this time, as our Berry and Sandstorm help us to tank Spiritomb's attacks. But suddenly, she gets a crit Dark Pulse, and we survive in the red on 28 HP. Damn. 
But from there, Bon Jovi goes on a rampage. There's a reason why he's called Rampardos. There was absolutely no room for error here. One mistake meant earthquaking Garchomp, or Milotic, or Roserade, or Steel and Fighting Lucario, pretty much anything sweeps our entire team. So I had to be absolutely ruthless, and in the end it all paid off as Bon Jovi carries us through for the final victory and what I believe is our first champion sweep of all time. And after all the hell that Cynthia's put us through in the past, I must say it feels pretty good. Well, we did it. We beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Platinum with only rock types, and I can't lie, that was an incredibly difficult challenge. Certainly up there among all the ones that we've done. I've got to give the MVP to a Probopass of all things, Blondie, whose typing literally saved us multiple times. But a huge shout out to Bon Jovi and Benatar for holding it down too. As always, make sure to subscribe to join the Soul Army and get us to a quarter million, and I'll see you guys next time for another challenge video.